It's a down-home Southern tradition. Hey guys, welcome back to At The Table. Sydney here and I'm joined again by my coworker and friend Denise and we are making another one of her really yummy, tasty family recipes, right? Yes. This is something your dad used to make? Yes, this is something that my dad used to make and my grandmother and basically they would make it um, in the colder months and most of the time after they've gone hunting. So we, it would normally be made in a wash pot in the, in the yard and um, they would have this ready so when the guys come back from hunting, so before they get ready to clean whatever their um, gaming was, they would eat um, fish stew. Yeah. So today we're gonna make some. So first thing we need to do is um, peel and cut um, some potatoes. Okay, I can handle that. And while she's peeling and cutting potatoes, I've already um, done some bacon. And we want to keep the bacon grease at the bottom of the pan so that we can get that flavor. So while she's cutting those potatoes, I have some already prepared and I'm going to layer them inside of the pot. So you're just going to take them and you're just going to layer them inside of the pot. And you know, make sure that you keep your hands kind of, you know, away from the grease because it's going to be popping up. And you want to get that good old, you want to, you want to take and layer the potatoes. And then you wanna put a little bit of onions on top of that. We're gonna put some onions on top. And then we're gonna put some of this yummy bacon. Bacon is good on everything, guys. You know, they put it in ice cream. I saw the cooking show last night and they had it in a pie, in the bottom of a pie. Oh, yeah. And it was supposed to be a sweet pie. So then we're gonna layer it with some more onions. I've made cupcakes with bacon on top before. Okay. For Max's birthday. So were they candy bacon or just regular bacon? No, it was regular bacon. Okay, that sounds and it was good. Good. Well, you know we're having a sweet competition at work, so maybe you need to bring those. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll make cookies with bacon in them. Oh yeah. You can just throw them right on in the pot. Don't even worry oh. about putting it in here. Just throw it right I on in the you. pot. And we're gonna layer that. And as we're laying it, we can um, sprinkle some seasoning. But what I try to do is I try to season it all at one time so I kind of like season the water. So we're just gonna throw this in while Sydney's getting our potatoes cut up. And, and one thing you wanna um, know about a stew is you don't wanna do a lot of stirring to the stew because you don't wanna break up your potatoes. So you might wanna, you wanna do more of shaking the pot than you do wanna stir it. So once Sydney get those in there, we're gonna get them in there, we're gonna get them sweat down. So sweat down means you wanna not have any water in it right now. You just wanna have the potatoes and the onions and you wanna kinda let them sweat so that they can kinda get a little tender before you put your water in. And you can use any type of seasoning that you want, but as my aunt say, do the basic salt and pepper. Can't go wrong with that. We're gonna just put a little salt in there and a little red pepper flakes. You never gotta have a little spice to this stuff now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sweat. We're gonna put the top on it so we can let it sweat down. So when we want it to sweat down, we're gonna put the top on it, we're gonna let it sweat down. And then we'll come back with some water or we'll come back with some chicken broth. So with the chicken broth, you can use chicken broth or, ve or vegetable broth, um, all depends, and you don't have to put bacon. Bacon um, is an extra additive, but if you don't eat bacon or you're trying to make it a little more healthy, you can leave the bacon out. And so what we wanna do is we wanna just kinda take our spoon and just kinda pat it down to make sure that it's sweating. And then we're gonna come back, we're gonna take a short break, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna show y'all how we put the broth or the water in. We'll be right back. 
Every year, 7 million 911 calls are made in North Carolina. 911, what's your emergency? Will you answer the call? Every second counts. You can be that lifeline. People in crisis look to us for assistance. We provide guidance and support until physical help can arrive at the scene. Join us and make a difference in our community. Be the calm in the chaos. Be the voice in the dark. It's the hardest career you'll ever love. Will you answer the call? Discover more at it.nc.gov slash 911 careers. Welcome back, guys. So we have our stew. I hear it cooking over there. What's happening? So it's so it's it um, sweated down. So now we're gonna put some broth in, and we just want to cover it up to the top. We don't want to put a whole lot of water or a whole lot of broth. We just want to cover it up to the top. And we're all, we're also gonna um, because this wasn't a whole box of broth. This is some additional that we had. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, bouillon season chicken seasoning in there, just to make sure we have a good. Uh, flavor and don't be scared to, to taste your to taste your um your water mixture to make sure that your seasoning is good because you want to make sure that you have good seasoning on your water because that's what's going to season the rest of your uh your stew and that was she was talking about this earlier we were talking about how we she makes the stew and you were talking about how your aunt always seasons the water Right. Because that water, especially if you're boiling something, it's going into the food. Right. And then that'll help to season your food really well. All right, Sydney, so while I'm tasting this um, broth, I want you to take our um, tomato paste and put just a little bit of ketchup in it to kind of loosen it up. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think we can stand a little more salt. Now this is one of these. Did you use the whole thing? No, I didn't use the whole thing. But about I, three quarters. But I always buy a bigger one than than what I need, just in case I need to add. Okay. And then what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna put that in here so that we can have a tomato base. Now fish stew can have a tomato base or a non-tomato base. Most of the um, eastern North Carolina has a tomato base, but when you go toward the mountains and places like that, they normally don't put um, any tomato base in their fish stew. And you can also add crab meat. Mm. And um, also we wanna talk about the type of fish to use. Now today we're gonna to use some flounder because we just went to the grocery store, but you wanna use a heavy body fish like um, a catfish or a red snapper, trigger fish, something like that, something that you probably get deep sea fishing. And then after we get that in there, we're gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna make sure that we put the lid on it so it can come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we wanna check it. We wanna check it to make sure that the potatoes are getting tender and that the onions are sweating down. So just look at that. Oh yeah, it looks pretty. So we wanna, we want and we just wanna keep it mixed, you know, kinda of mixed up. And we don't put the fish in yet either. We wanna put the fish in at the very end. Now your dad or family members would typically go fishing, right? And that's when your family traditionally did this, it would be from them fishing and then yes. you have leftovers. So they would go deep sea fishing or they would go to the river and what they would do is they, and once they get those fish and they would freeze them, then the heavy body fish they would you know, keep for stuff like this. And they would cut it into, they would, um, clean it and cut it into steak. And, and then they would um, put them in here for stuff like this, mm. for like stews and things of that nature. And so this is what we would use. So we, like I was telling you earlier, they would go hunting. And so they have to have room for the hunting things like the squirrels oh. and the rabbits. So now it's time for you to start taking the fish out the freezer. Clean out the freezer. And use that for, um, for stews and stuff like that so that you can get in the the game for the winter in there yeah i think that's i mean it's a great way to use what you have in your home right and mm -hmm. utilize stuff i feel like back in the day we were a little bit better about that and not having quite as much food waste you would yes. you would hunt and fish you know for what you were going to eat and then you needed to have room yeah to, so then you just it. take it out and you use it and then you got to keep in mind that a lot of times um, these traditions and stuff come from the slavery times when they had little 
to, to, to eat, and they would have to find different ways to take what they, they were able to get and be able to use it in different ways. So, you know, when you think about fish, you think about fried fish. Right. But this way, you would have another um, dish that you can eat the fish with. Okay. All yeah. right, so we're going we're gonna to let this boil, and we'll be right back with y'all. See y'all in just a minute. It's the holiday season, time for feasting and for gathering with friends and family. Having everyone together lightens the heart, but it also weighs down your Wi-Fi network. You see, most home Wi-Fi networks just aren't robust enough for crowds until now. Introducing AirTies from Star Communications. AirTies work together to blanket your home with a strong load balancing Wi-Fi mesh network that can handle the biggest family gathering, including Cousin Tommy, you know, the Fortnite King. AirTies from Star Communications. Welcome back, guys. Our stew is smelling good. It is cooking over here. How are we with it? What do we well, need it's, to be aware of? It's boiling pretty good. and We, we want to just kind of move our stuff around a little. We don't really want to stir, stir. We want to move it around. And we want our um, potatoes about, mm, like you know how to do pasta al dente. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want them all the way, all the way. You do want them broke up a little bit because you don't want to cook your um, your potatoes away. You want them to have a little bit of body. So I think if we cook them maybe mm, six or seven more minutes, you know? Yeah. And this would be a good time for us to taste our broth again. Can let's get a, yes. a yeah. fresh spoon. Let's get two spoons. And let's we added, taste too. Um, we added the rest of that tomato paste, right? So we ended up using that whole can. Right, because we want it to be thick. It was a, it was a little too thin. Watch your finger, because it could be boiling up. What you think? You think we need to add any more seasoning? Mm. I think it's delicious. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this up and let it cook down some more. But mm. in the meantime, in between time, let's talk about this bread. All right. So we have a couple different cornbreads here, right? So um, I had a meeting this past week and we had chili. So I made some cornbread to go with it. And I think this is actually one that I have done on the show before. I always add corn to my cornbread. Okay. I just feel like it gives a little bit of extra texture. Um, and I just, I mean, I like vegetables, you know? So I like to hide stuff in my food. So this is a good question to ask. So is this sweet cornbread or sort of like savory cornbread? I have grown up on sweet cornbread. What about you? Well. You like both? I like both. Um, normally with the stew, if my grandmother was cooking or my aunt, somebody that knows how to cook their wet cornbread, they would have a, a a cast iron skillet and they would have cornbread and they would have cornbread fritters or they would bake a thin um, cornbread and it's like a, it's called a wet cornbread and it doesn't really rise but it gets crispy around along the edges and that's normally what we would have with this stew but because I don't know how to make it we're gonna have sweet cornbread and you know we just we just want to have a little different texture that we can eat with the stew other than just having stew and nothing else so yeah. we have made some um, cornbread muffins here, and we're just going to take those. Oh, that's fine. Mess that one we're just going to take but... them out and put them in our pan so that when our stew is ready, we can also have some cornbread to dip into our stew. And I sprayed the pan, but you can't tell right now. <laughs> some of them are a little... A little tough to get out, but it's all right. That happens. And this, you know, I feel like these little pieces, I usually like to save them because... You want to put that in your in your stew or your chili or whatever anyways and help to give it some good flavor. flavor. So Okay. Sounds like a good idea. I don't usually waste those little, or I'll just eat those a little bit. Because <laughs> I love to be eating while I'm cooking. I know. Sometimes you start eating while you're cooking and then by the time the food is done, you're not hungry no more. Yeah. That happens to my mom all the time. And that's what happens to me. Especially during this time of the year when you have a lot of um, cooking going on for Thanksgiving oh, and Christmas. Yeah. And you have to taste, you know, you have to taste to make sure everything is tasting good and smelling good. So look at those bubbles. And and watch your hand too, because that steam, that hot. steam will burn your hand. Now, do you always use an aluminum pot? Do you feel like that makes a difference in your cooking versus like a regular? Yes, I think an aluminum pot um, makes a big difference because it holds heat well. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and it cooks evenly. Sometimes when you use those ceramic pots, it doesn't cook as evenly. And this cooks pretty evenly, so I do I do like to use these kind. And you do want to make use one that has enough room in it, so that if you're making a bigger stew, 
you have more space. Yeah. So we're just making a modest size stool today because it's just a few of us. Yeah. But if we were making um, one for like my grandma that would make, you know, we would need a big pot because we would be feeding a lot of people. And this also, I think the aluminum heats up a little bit more quickly too, it does. right? So you don't mm -hmm. have to quite wait as long yeah, to get it. Yeah, and it's cooking. been cooking pretty good. Oh yeah. And it seems like, you know, we could get this done in about 30 minutes. Yeah. And who doesn't like a 30 minute meal? I love something quick and easy. Um, you talked about your your corn fritters. Mm -hmm. Now, I have never had those. So what <sighs> exactly, how do you make that? What is all involved in making Well, that? a corn fritters is made with corn meal opposed to um, a lot of uh, muffins okay. are made with a mix. This is made with cornmeal, and you have to have the right consistency of the cornmeal. It has to um, either be white or yellow. Normally white is the best, and you want to, after you mix it, you want to sit it and let it rest, like put it in the refrigerator for a while so that um, the cornmeal will rise as it sits. Okay. So then you would just take um, a cast iron skillet and you'll put a little grease um, just, to, you know, like some chicken grease or whatever kind of grease you got and put it in the pan. And then you would do it like you would do sort of like pancakes as they bubble, as it bubbles up around the side, you flip it. Oh, do you put eggs Delicious. or oil or anything with it as well? I mean, in the mixture? Well, in the mixture, you, you pretty much mix it. Um, you may put like one or two eggs. They normally don't put much sugar or any sugar mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt. I think I'd like those better and than milk. Just of course, you gotta get plain. Some milk. I don't really like cornbread that doesn't have the sweetness to it. But if it was a fried corn fritter, you don't I know think what you're that missing. would be a totally different uh, oh, ball game. People. Then <laughs> you don't know what you're missing, but I, I don't know how to make them. Well, you're gonna have to learn that and come on the show and make yeah, those with us. I have to talk to my cousin and get that <laughs> recipe. Well, I think we're gonna let this cook just a little bit longer. And then the last step is our eggs and our fish. Our fish. So we'll take a quick break. We'll see you guys back in just a second to finish up our stew. Let's get out of here. Protect what matters most in your life with security from Star Communications. Hey guys, welcome back. So our stew is looking good. We've got two more things to add and then we're done, right? Yes. So what do we have left? Okay, so now we're gonna put um, fish in. And as I said, we need to use a meaty fish um, like a red snapper or a catfish or a trigger fish or something that's, you know, real meaty. But because we just got regular old food line brand, <laughs> uh, flounder, we don't, we, we want to, we want to put them in, but we don't want to leave them in too long. So Sydney, get you a fork and let's just layer in a few pieces of fish. Yeah, let's put one more piece in there. We don't want it to be too fishy, yeah, right? We don't want it to be too fishy. And they're gonna like sting, like poach. Like you, if you've ever been to like um, a Japanese or a Chinese restaurant, they sting the fish uh -huh. in a little basket. It's sort of similar to that. Okay. So let's crack about three eggs on the top. Yes, guys, eggs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna crack them on the top and they're gonna Come up like a sort of like I'll a poach them. egg. As you do them, then I can wash my hand. And then you'll 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 know it's ready because they'll kind of rise to the top. And once you do this, absolutely no stirring at all. All right. So we're gonna put the lid back on, and you can shake the pot. You know, let's shake, shake, shake. Just a little bit. So you can kind of get your eggs covered and your fish covered. I'm gonna let y'all look in here one more time. See that egg at the top? That means it's done? No, no, it's not quite done. But what I'm gonna do, am I gonna put a little bit of sauce over it so it can kind of, you know, get boiling, see? But you can see this, see this part of the egg, oh. the white of the egg, uh -huh. it's coming up. Yeah. And then you can see that. 
right there. So they're gonna sort of like rise to the top. That's gonna take a couple minutes. And once we see that, is that kind of, that tells us it's done? Yeah, that tells us we're ready to eat. Mm. So in the meantime, in between time, we're gonna get two bowls ready. Yep, we've got those. We got two bowls ready. And we need two spoons or forks. Cause we need to taste this stuff. We do, we need to try it. We're gonna try it. After I had that little taste of the sauce, I'm, my mouth's been watering ever since. Oh yeah. I'm ready to eat it. Now, as a kid, there will be people standing all around that black pot. Is that where like people hung out and socialized kind of? Or well, just excited to eat? Just excited to eat. And then, you know, at that point, everybody's coming back from catching their, um, catching, um, getting deer and squirrel. And they're over there cleaning them and carrying on and the kids is running around. That's when kids played outside, you know. You know, the kids are running around. And sometimes um, during Christmas time, my grandma would do that and they would be cooking a hog. Oh, okay. And they would dig a hole in the ground and um, they would use an old bed mattress, the springs of a bed mattress, and they took all the stuff off of it. And they would dig a hole, they would put the pig on it and put it in the ground. Wow. And then bring it out when it's, girl, you talking about good eating. <laughs> and they we don't would... cook like that anymore, do we? No, no cooking like that. All right, guys, we're almost ready here. And so you want, want, want once once your pot starts uh, boiling like this, we want a little more boys to it because when you put the fish in the eggs and it kind of cools it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now when it's boiling like this, it's getting back to the right temperature. So when we get a good boil on it, if I stop taking the lid off, we get it. <laughs> um, once we get a good boil on it, then we know. See, look at that egg right there. See? It? Yeah. Getting there. Yep, it's getting there. See, this one is real, it's real good. See? Oh yeah, that one's almost ready. So I'm gonna put the lid back on. So what we might have to do is just show you guys the finished product once it's after. Yeah. Because it might take a few more minutes and. Yeah, because we want to make sure that the egg is done. Yeah. We want to make sure the egg is done. So this is some of our traditions. You know, you, you don't think about your traditions all the time, but when the holidays come and people have passed away or things like this, this right here brings back good memories. Yeah, and it's the same as I talked about the bread that I made last time. And just anytime I smell that, it makes me think of Christmas or my mom because that's what we did together. And that's probably the same for you. You start thinking about your grandma cooking and being with your dad and just brings back all of those good memories. Yeah. Food yeah. is so, so special in that way that yes. it helps to help us remember those special memories we have. Yes, yeah, better than a song. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> we you need know, to eat it. Yeah, because you hear a song and you remember, but this is better than a song. Yeah, for sure. Well, I can't wait to try it. And we will get this um, all fold up here for you in a little bit so that you guys can see. But thank you, Denise, for sharing with us. And we cannot wait to eat it. At the table. See you next time.